Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Deanna Mata. The Bixby Spartans have just won their fifth state championship in a row. So that means we got to talk to the man in charge. Lauren Montgomery, the head coach for the Bixby Spartans, will be joining us here soon. Later on, Michael Knight will join us talking about recruiting news all over the state of Oklahoma. But before that, let's check in with Lauren Montgomery. Lauren, how's it going? It's going great. Glad to be here visiting with you guys. And uh, I'm glad to be just coming off of a season where we got to play until December. (laughs) <laughs> well, you're always playing in December, it seems like. And that, I guess that's the one question that everybody – we talked a little bit before we started recording here. But now that the football season's over, does everything slow down for you? Is, is things kind of, you know, leveling out and it's not as hectic as it was during the season? It will. Uh, it's it's really busy right now I'm trying to button up some loose ends, obviously. Um, We had some really good football players this year, and and so the nomination processes for All-State, all the postseason awards that are going on, that's important. And then already looking to next year with exit interviews for our returning players, getting off-season calendar, things like that lined up. But um, once we get to Christmas break, hopefully things will settle down just a little bit and allow us to get back into a routine once we return from holiday vacation there. So what what goes into play with all that stuff as far as your you know responsibilities? You said preseason, I mean postseason awards and different things like that. What kind? What how, what does the head coach have to do? Well, you know, uh, so number one, uh, we've got to we get to nominate uh, a lot of good players for Tulsa World, Daily Oklahoman. Um, there's a whole lot of them, and each of them want a, a little bit different format, and then. Also, uh, the head coach has to schedule and set up exit interviews, um, not only with players, but also coaches. I think it's an important piece of the program to kind of recap and and, uh, cement the end of the football season and uh, set our underclassmen's goals for the program moving forward. And then we also do the same with seniors, trying to get feedback for uh, our program. Man, there's a reason why the Bixby Spartans are where they are. It's, it takes a lot of information, organization, and, you know, kind of listening to the people that are in the program. That's phenomenal. But what now what I'm hearing is nothing has slowed down for you. You're kind of busy at this time of the year after the season. When? And so my next question is, when does things start to slow down? Because I know spring ball starts after, you know, Christmas and different things like that. So when when is your slow period? When is your time to relax and take a little vacation and some time off? That's a good question. We'll uh, we'll get some downtime, hopefully button up a few things here before Christmas break where we don't have to come into the office um, for a week or two over Christmas break. That's always enjoyable, catch the bowl games. Um, and then as we come back in the off season, we'll start our staff meetings, uh, book study, leadership council, all those things. And uh and hopefully uh, begin to move the program forward and look towards 2023. And so that's a big deal, um, you know, for us is is never really have – we take a couple weeks at Christmas. We'll take spring break. Uh, when we finish with team camp in the summer, we'll take a week in June and then the mandatory bye week in July. So really, if you space that out over the year, there's, there's about five weeks that our players have off. Um, and uh, and so we try to make make the most of all the time that we have with our student athletes because we got to see in, in 2020 um, that not having that time and how it affected kids, how it affected coaches and, and, and those things. And so we try to cherish every moment that we have to improve our program, every, every moment that we have to develop relationships with kids. Well, before we go ahead and look towards 2023, let's go ahead and look back with 2022 with Coach Lauren Montgomery when we come back here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with the head football coach over there for the Bixby Spartans, Lauren Montgomery. Now, Coach, everybody was talking about it before the football season started. It was all the talk and since, I want to say, last winter and last spring, the Bixby Spartans are going to 6A1, it, and, and could they handle the, the pressure of playing in that, you know, that new big school division? It seems like you guys handle it very well. What, what was it like making that transition, and what were some of the differences between the two? 
I'd say the biggest transition was that we played a lot of teams that we haven't played before. Uh, I think there were four teams on our roster, uh, or excuse me, on our schedule that uh, the Bixby Spartans had never played. And so that was kind of new uh, in the 6A1 setup with uh, only a few of the big schools being over on this side of the state, the east side of the state. Um, travel was a little bit more of an issue. So uh, just some of those things. And then obviously if you're playing larger schools uh, with larger ADMs or larger enrollments, um, the teams are going to be bigger. They're going to be deeper. And uh, where maybe as in 6A1, a team might have one or two good offensive linemen. Now those teams are having four or five good offensive linemen. It seemed like everybody we played had a guy that could – could take it to the house on kickoff return, had good skill guys um, and those things. But as far as the football goes, the football is football. And uh, the coaches, really, I think we're seeing, you know, and I know you're down working the state championship games, Dion, but it's, you know, at every level in Oklahoma football, the football is really, really good. And we have really, really co good coaches in the state of Oklahoma. At what point in in uh, your time at Big Speed did you feel like you guys were ready to make that push towards 6A1? Well, uh, I, this is kind of a smart elk answer, but when our enrollment jumped up to to that number 16 spot and, and we moved up there at the last uh, redistricting, we weren't really sure where we're whether we were going to be 6A1 or 6A2. So it was challenging from a scheduling standpoint because – you know, if you schedule uh, 6A1 teams, then on that schedule, um, all of a sudden they may be a district opponent. And so you kind of had to have some contingency plans and, and those things. But, um, you know, I would be lying, Dion, if I didn't say that the split between 6A1 and 6A2 didn't benefit the Bixby Spartans. Um, we knew that we had a really good team coming up in 2014. Some guys that had started with us in eighth grade had come up through the program. Uh, we were beginning to get stronger um, in the weight room. We were beginning to understand uh, what we were doing on the field. And so um, 6A split happened, and then we were fortunate enough to get on, on a roll. And then um, just like anything else, as you start to build momentum, obviously Bixby's a growing community. Um, we're, we're getting more and more student athletes out for football. Um, we were able to build just a little bit of uh, momentum. Um, and then that brought us into this uh, 2022 football season. And, and we ended up having a pretty good year. You talk about getting stronger. And that's one of the things, I mean, you, you know me, Oklahoma State, body by glass. Coach Glass has preached that to us uh, from a very, very young freshman years over there at Stillwater. And I know that once you put that and instill that into your program, it makes a big world of difference. Do you think that's the recipe for your success, putting together a great strength and conditioning program? I would say that that's probably the biggest thing um, that's allowed us to have, have success. Um, in 2010 and 2011 and some of those years, we weren't that great at, at football. We had some decent teams. We had some decent players, but we're having a hard time. Uh, you know, filling in the cracks. And uh, and so we decided that we were going to get good at something that we could control. And that was um, how strong we were and made a commitment. The school district made a commitment to um, uh, giving us the equipment we need, giving us the space we need. And then eventually in 2014, giving us the structure we need um, to maximize our athletes' potential. And that's a, that's a key uh, for us, maximize each athlete's potential. But I would say there are so many variables in football, but the one steady, the one thing that's made uh, probably the biggest difference in our program over the years has been that strength culture that, that we like to cultivate here in Bixby. All right. So we all know the stories of legendary coaches like Nick Saban when, the, you know, he, he wins that national championship. He gets onto the plane and everybody's looking at him and he's writing lists down of what he wants inside his new contract and what he needs to add to the program for, to continue that success. I recently heard that the Bixby Spartans are now adding uh, new facilities, including maybe a new high school and, a, and an indoor facility, I, I read. It, correct me if I'm wrong, because, I mean, you know better than I do, but is, is this true and, and how will this, you know, help the program? Well, there are bits and pieces of that that are true. First off, uh, we passed a bond last year um, that 
that is allowing us to address some of our growing pains here in Bixby, you know, and namely um, our high school building. You know, everyone understands that Bixby has been a growing community um, and we've continued to build uh, onto our high school. Well, now we're at a point where we're going to build a new high school essentially in the south end zone of the football stadium um, so that we can effectively uh, teach and educate our students along with that high school on this bond election is money for athletic improvements. We all understand there are going to be challenges with inflation, with interest rates, some of those things. But um, we there are plans right now to expand our locker rooms, uh, our varsity and junior high locker rooms, coaches' offices, and add to the footprint of our end zone facility that we call Home of the Spartans. When we come back, let's talk with Coach Montgomery about some of the best moments in the 2022 season. We'll be right back here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with the man that leads the Bixby Spartans onto the field, Lauren Montgomery, head coach of the Bixby Spartans football team. Coach, 2022 season was a big time push forward for the Bixby Spartans, making that jump to, uh, to 6A1. Uh, what were some of your favorite memories from the season? I think the big thing, um, you know, that st stands out in my mind when you ask me that question is just the fact that we had so many guys step up. Um, when you look at our defense, uh, defense was was really tough this year. I think we only gave up uh, eight or nine points a ball game. We did that with an entirely new front seven. Our front seven guys were all guys that didn't start last year. And so I think that's a big, big deal. We were fortunate enough to have our back end back, but to be able to get all those guys ready to play and play at a high level. Credit goes to Coach Rodney Flowers and our defensive staff. And then offensively, you know, I know the big question mark going into the year, we graduated a lot of really good guys. We only have four returners coming back. What's it going to look like life without Braylon Presley? And so how are we going to move the ball? What things are we going to be able to do? Um, and I've got to give a lot of credit to Coach Tyler Schneider and our offensive staff for being creative and, and finding a way to um, continue to score. I think we scored 62 points a game um, with a lot of new faces. We only have one returner on the offensive line, uh, new quarterback. Um, you know, Braylon Presley's gone, just a lot of those things. And so, um, you know, hats off to, to our staff, hats off to a, a lot of players that didn't have a whole lot of Friday night game reps, um, you know, for continuing to grow and get better as our season went on. All right, everybody's going to be asking you about this for a while. The, 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 this winning streak comes to an end in 2022. What was that Jinx Trojan game like on national television with ESPN coming to town, everybody talking about it all around the, the, the state of Oklahoma? What was that game like and, and what did you think of the end result? Well, uh, first off, I still haven't watched the replay yet. Haven't been able to bring myself to watch the the ESPN too. But um, hats off to Coach Riggs over there, and and they played just a, a marvelous game. Made very very few mistakes. Their guys made plays. Now, as far as a football game goes, an environment to play in probably the best environment that we've ever played in here at, at Spartan Stadium. It was just electric. You walked out of the building and and you could just hear the roar every play that was made. It was standing room only. I know we sold every single ticket that we had to sell. Uh, so it, it was a, a phenomenal environment to play in. Unfortunately, we did come up a little bit short, and that was disheartening knowing that it was on the national stage. So throughout the season, there were a number of games that, you know, you guys were very impressive in. But what game stood out to you most that most people might not look at and saying, hey, this is a team that definitely can win this state championship? You know, it's hard to say. You know, we had, uh, you know, some really big wins. But I think, you know, being able to come back and have that semifinal uh, win uh, against Jinx in another good environment over at Broken Arrow, I would say, I think the newspaper said there are 12,000 people in the stands, which is a, 
a pretty crazy crowd to play on a Saturday at one o'clock. And so that was a fun environment and it wasn't a clean game. We turned the ball over, but I felt like, uh, you know, our kids battled and it was really good, really tough physical football on both sides. But um, I think if you fast forward to the next week and the final against Owasso, you know, we, we talk all year about playing our best ball, not making mistakes, capitalizing on the other team's mistakes. And that was a game where right away uh, Owasso made some mistakes and we were able to capitalize on it and ultimately was the difference in the game. So I think maybe that very last game was our best game that we had put together, uh, you know, through and through and on a big stage. Well, congratulations again, coach, for that 6 a one state championship against the Owasso Rams. One last question before we get you out of here. There were some changes that were made uh, in Oklahoma as far as rules and regulations. I know the NIL rule is going to be in place for Oklahoma high school football players. How do you think that affects Oklahoma high school football, and how does it affect the Bixby Spartans? Well, first off, I'm not really sure yet. Um you're not really sure how, how it's going to end up affecting college for that matter. It's such a crazy environment right now, but in high school, to be honest with you, Dion, not a lot changes, you know, kids, um, student athletes before were able to, um, were able to do commercials, were able to capitalize on their name, image, likeness, um, things like that. There weren't any rules against that as long as it wasn't in, um, their Bixby Spartan jerseys and some of those things. So not a lot has changed there. You know, we, we've we dealt with that just a little bit because, um, you know, we have a, a student athlete on a senior this year, uh, Christian Kaiser, who's extremely popular TikTok figure. And since he turned 18, he's been able to make money with his TikTok presence. And uh, I don't know that – and that, that would be his name, image, likeness. He doesn't involve – um, you know, Bixby Spartan football a ton other than normal pictures or videos that all of our student athletes would do. So um, it remains to be seen. Um, and we're kind of cautiously optimistic about um, some of the opportunities that that may present uh, for our program. But right now we're just trying to learn more about it. Well, as, as you know, the Bixby Spartans are always prepared and always ready for anything, it seems like, especially when rules come in, in and out and, and change. And changes and adversity come, but the Bixby Spartans know how to handle it, it seems like. So congratulations, Coach, on the uh, successful season, the first season in the 6A1 division, and congratulations on another state championship. Awesome. I appreciate it, uh, and it's a pleasure to be on here and an honor to be on here with you guys. Coming up next, Michael Knight will join us to talk about the two-way state championship. Also, you can't leave without giving us some prime recruiting news here in the state of Oklahoma. We'll be right back here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. Well, it's that time of the week once again. Michael Knight from Prep Red Zone is here to talk with us about Oklahoma high school football and some recruiting news. Michael Knight, let's get started off with some more state championships, this time in the lower classifications. Uh, what did you see this weekend? Yeah, Washington uh, finally got it done after making it to the state championship game in 2020, 2021. They lost to Metro Christian in 20. Then they lost to Marlowe in a heartbreaker last year. And they came into this season as the team to beat in Class 2A. They had just about everybody back. They're very talented on both sides of the ball. And I thought, look, if they're going to get it done, this is going to be the year. They got tested in that championship game against Millwood. Uh, young sophomore Nate Roberts, one of the best prospects in the state's 2025 class for Washington. He caught what ended up being the game-winning touchdown with about two and a half minutes left in the game. Uh, that put Washington up for good. Their defense was able to hold. Uh, but Millwood is kind of now in a situation that Washington was in where they have a lot of young talent. I think that Millwood's going to be right back in the state championship picture next year. They have a sophomore in Jaden Nickens that has already earned All-American honors uh, and an All-American invitation uh, to one of the, I believe it's the Under Armour game. They have another sophomore on defense, a linebacker, Cameron Carter, who had a spectacular performance in the championship game. So Millwood, and they're also starting a freshman at quarterback. So they're going to return a lot of talent next year. I think that they're going to be right back in the mix. But this season, Washington came 
came into the year as the team to beat, and they're the ones that were raising the goal ball. Do you have any more recruiting news for us before uh, before the offseason begins? Yeah, it's already beginning. The big news this week, uh, obviously, with the, the breaking news last week of Deion Sanders going to Colorado, um, Coach Prime heading to the Pac-12, and he's already had an impact in Oklahoma. Uh, plain view, wide receiver, linebacker, defensive back. He can play just about every position when it comes to offense and defense. Morgan Pearson down at plain view. He had committed to Colorado before Deion Sanders was hired. He has remained committed, obviously. He's very excited about the prospects there. And then they just picked up another commitment from a top Oklahoma talent uh, that was available. Putnam City defensive end Tage McCoy, who had a breakout season last year as a junior, became one of the top defensive linemen in the state's 2023 class. He announced earlier this week that he's headed to Boulder to play for Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes. So uh, we, we've seen and we've heard about Coach Prime and his impact immediately on on recruiting and high school kids and wanting to play for him. And we're seeing it here at the local level in Oklahoma with him landing uh, two of the better prospects in the 2023 class. And another person with some weight on their name here in the state of Oklahoma, my man, Michael Knight. Michael Knight, thank you so oh, much. For- time. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in with us during football season now. Football season's over, but basketball season's right around the corner. So we'll check in with you. And for those who are looking for you and want to know where to find your stuff, where do they go? Yeah, you can check us out, prepredzone.com slash Oklahoma. We have a ton of postseason stuff coming up on the site starting next week. Uh, season in review, all state teams, player of the year. Uh, coach of the year, everything to wrap up the 2022 season. And then right around the corner, early January, January 14th, we have our next showcase camp in Broken Arrow in Neheist Park. Uh, So looking forward to hosting some of the best players in Oklahoma, along with a bunch of different college staffs who are not only going to be working the event, but scouting and extending offers as well. So if you have a kid, if you're a kid and want to come out and, and ball out in front of some college coaches, you can check us out on prepredzone.com for all the information to get signed up for our camp on January 14th. Remember, guys, only the best in Oklahoma, like the head coach of the state champion Bixby Spartans, Lauren Montgomery, make the Ford High School Weekly. So thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Dion Amade. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma.